There will be more questions after this. So we've got these two over here and then these two over here. Okay, so it says two small identical spheres P and T are placed a distance of 0 0.1 meters apart as shown in the diagram. P has a charge of positive 3 times 10 to the negative 6, whereas this one is just negative 3 times 10 to the negative 6. First question says state Coulomb's law. Okay, so let's write out Coulomb's law's equation, which is KQ1 Q2 over R squared. Now, from the definition, you can get, um, I mean, from the formula, you can work out the definition. Because what it says here is that the, um, I'll get the definition for us now, but it's going to say something like, the electrostatic force of attraction between two objects is directly proportional to the product of their charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Now let's go get the proper definition. And so here we have the magnitude of the electrostatic force exerted by one ch point charge on another point charge is directly proportional. That's why uh, from the formula we can see it's at the top to the product of the magnitudes of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. And that's why they say the square. Okay, so from the, def from the formula you can often it helps you to remember the definition. This question says, draw the resultant electric field pattern due to the charges on P and T. So what you need to understand is that if something is positive, then the electric field lines go away from it. If something is negative, the electric field lines go towards it. Okay, so if you have a positive, and a negative, well then all that will happen is the following. You can draw the positive one, which was P. You can draw the negative one, which is T, and just make the electric field lines connect them, and then just show the arrow that it's going from P to T. You can do another one like that. You can do another one like that, for example. Um, see, so it goes from the positive, to the negative. You can also show some going out like that. And then we could show some random lines going um, like out of here, like that, like that, like that. And then we could show some coming into the T. So there, there, and there, for example. Now they tell us that a third, okay, so this is what we originally had. We originally had P and we originally had um, T over there. Now they're saying that a third charge S of unknown charge is placed at a distance of 0 0.15 meters um, such that the three charges are, at the, are the vertices of a right angled triangle. The net electrostatic force on T due to the other two is 10 newtons. The first question says, is charge Q positive or negative? Okay, oh, and it says yeah, as shown in the diagram below. Okay, so this is very easy because if you look at P and you look at T, we know that they are oppositely charged. What do opposites do? Opposites, do they attract or repel? They attract. So what would P be doing to T? Pulling it upwards or pushing T downwards? Well, well done if you said it's pulling T upwards, okay? But now they tell us that T is moving in this direction. So then what do you think this one is doing? Is that one causing T to go left or is it pulling T towards the right hand side? Well, well done if you said it's pulling T towards the right. Because if you take this and you take this and you combine that, then you get that. Now, if S is able to attract T, so S, is causing T to go this way. That means that S must be positive because opposites attract. Okay, so we can say here positive. This question says, for six marks, calculate the number of electrons that were added to or removed from S to give it a charge of QS. Quite an interesting question. Right, so what we will do is we need to go and calculate the charge. 
of this. So what we'll do is let's quickly go calculate the charge between, or the force between these two, okay? Um, so we'll use the F equals to K Q1 Q2 over R squared formula for these two, all right? And so we could say F is equal to, now K is nine times 10 to the nine. Now remember, you don't use negatives in this formula. Okay, so the first charge, we can just say three times 10 to the negative six. And the other one is also three times 10 to the negative six. Don't put the negative. The distance between them is 0 0.1, remember to square. If we work that out, Oh, and this is the this, this is the force between um, P and T. So P and T. Okay, and that's going to be eight point one newtons. So check this out, guys. If we if we know that T is over here, we know that it is being pulled upwards. It is being pulled upwards by P. Okay, this is the force of P. We know that it's being pulled to the right by S. So this would be the force of S. And we know that the overall effect is 10 newtons. We also know that the force of P is 8.1 newtons. Because remember, if you work out the force between P and T, that's what we did over here, then Newton's third law says that that's the force of P on T, but it's also the force of T on P. It's the same thing. So we can use Pythagoras now to go and work out this. And we know we can use Pythagoras because they said that it's at a right angle. Uh, it's, it's forming, where did they say that? Oh, the vertices of a right angle triangle. So we're gonna go use Pythagoras to calculate this. So we could say that Fs is gonna be the square root, because remember in Pythagoras you square, and you're gonna square root, and you're gonna say 10 squared minus 8.1 squared. We're minusing because we already have the hypotenuse, okay? Um, and then if we go work this out now, if you don't like the way I'm doing Pythagoras, then just do it the way you would normally do it, and you will still get to the same answer, okay? And that's gonna give us 5.86 Newtons. I'm gonna say 5.864, because it's not the final answer. So that would be the force of S. So now I know the force between these two charges. I know that it is um, the force of TS, which is T on S or S on T, Newton's third law, it doesn't matter. And so we can say 5.864. So what we can do now is we can use the force formula, this one. And so we can say that the force of ST is going to be um, K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. Now we already know the force. It is 5.864. 9 times 10 to the 9. Now let's say the Q1 is 3 times 10 to the negative 6, which is this one. And then for Q of S, we don't know. Okay, the distance between them, 0 0.15. Right, okay. Now to obviously to calculate um, Q S, there's different ways of getting Q S by itself, but yeah. So I'm just gonna, um, let me see if I can make some space. Okay, so to get Q S alone, what I would have done, well, what I would do is I'll say 5.864, and then I'll take this part and multiply it over like that, and then I'll divide by these other ones. Okay, and so if you had to work out QS, you would get. Okay, I'm not gonna round off because it's not the final answer, so we're gonna end up with 4.88, I'm gonna keep two decimal places, I mean four decimal places, times 10 to the negative six, and that's coulombs. Now that's the charge of S. So now what you can do is use this formula, which they do give you on the formula sheet. Um, it's from grade 10. And what it is, is it tells you how to calculate the number of electrons, if you know the charge, and you know the charge of an electron. Now this value is given to you on your formula sheet in that table, okay? And it's negative 1.6, times 10 to the negative 19. However, on this for, or in this formula, you don't need to use the negatives. And so you're gonna end up with 4.8866 times 10 to the negative six. And then at the bottom here, we have 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, whoopsie. And so if you had to work out the number of electrons, you would end up with 3.05 times 10 to the 13 electrons.